Okay, let's get on to this purchase of provider sp mm. um, split, Hamish. Um, Jean Quinn uh, says, wouldn't the most efficient change for the NHS be to end the purchase of provider split because of its high transactional costs and negative effect on partnership working? And that's echoed in a way by Dr Judith Danby, who's a GP, and she's concerned that the any willing provider policy will lead to reduced spending, more waste. You've talked about that. Yeah, you? and I would agree with both of them, and we would like that to happen. Unfortunately, all three major parties going into the last election uh, wanted to maintain the market and the purchase provider split and uh, as far as we know and the, the new labor government the new labor opposition policy is still unclear uh, they have not said that they would abandon the internal market in England which is obviously what we would want them to do I personally believe that the only chance we've got of actually trying to get through the very difficult financial circumstances we'll have over the next few years is everybody working together, a removal of the, many of the perverse incentives that payment by results has, uh, and by everybody, I mean primary care, secondary care, public health, the public, local politicians, mm -hmm. all trying to make decisions in the best interests of their communities and to reduce some of the <coughs> transactional costs that the, the questioners um, talk about. It's been our pol policy for a long time. The problem is that I think if the BMA were to oppose the white paper, we wouldn't lose the internal market. What we would probably lose is medical involvement in this, because, and, and what a lot of people fear, the, the bringing in of the private sector, we would actually hasten, because they say, well, doctors don't want to do it, they're walking away from it, we'll find some other people to commission care, uh, we'll get the private sector to do it. So I think people do have to say, although this is challenging, what are the consequences of not trying to make this work? Um, Andrea Franks, who's a consultant dermatologist in Chester, says the internal market has massively increased NHS administration costs. The Parliamentary Health Select Committee report on commissioning early this year concluded that 14% of the NHS budget, which is about 14 billion, is now spent on commissioning. How can this possibly be justified? Well, 14% is probably spent on management. How much of it is actually spent on commissioning is debatable. And that's up from probably around 6% in the early 90s. Um, uh, so I would agree with Andrea. I don't think it is justifiable. And I think we could make significant savings, both in terms of actual money, but also actually the amount of clinician time that is often involved in some of the bureaucracy that underpins the internal market. Uh, but the, although they're linked, people should not confuse two things. One are the white paper proposals. The other thing is the financial climate and the, the fact that we need to identify, people have talked about 15 to 20 billion in terms of savings, something that was announced under the previous government, to actually cope with the rising demand in the NHS. And irrespective of what was happening with the white paper, there would still be the financial problems there. And I'm I don't know, optimistic enough, foolish enough, depends what phrase you want to use, to believe that better decisions will be made if clinicians are involved in that decision-making process than if they're not. Uh, John, as an economist, do you believe that the any willing provider approach is actually going to save money? No, I don't. <coughs> I think that there, 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 there is a very perfectly acceptable economic theory around natural monopolies, which says that um, a multi, um, a multi-product organisation like a DGH is, can be more efficient taking the whole basket of, 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 of services it provides and part carving off small bits of it to uh, individual providers who might be cost, cost, uh, cost effective in those areas isn't necessarily a sound economic solution. Uh, it has the capacity to undermine the existing NHS provision and to that, and to that extent it's, it's economically um, inefficient. Why would it undermine it? Well, if, if, you, if you imagine a situation where, say, all uh, elective surgery was taken from a, um, a district general hospital, leaving it with an income deficit, it has to manage emergency services nonetheless. It has to operate A&E departments. It has to operate the crash teams that come to the private hospitals to, to, to sort out patients who've got into difficulties. Um, those services all have to be there. And if you've undermined them financially, 
then mm. they won't be. But you wouldn't take out elective surgery unless it was cheaper to do it that way and you would make a management decision based on sensible decisions, not just economy, wouldn't you? Well, this is where, this is where the, the regulator will come into play. The economic regulator and the government's proposals monitor will hopefully be charged with ensuring that essential services are provided and ensuring that the market doesn't destabilise NHS providers. And to the extent that monitor does that, then there, is, there are some safeguards in the government's proposals. But nonetheless, any willing provider has the capacity to do this and we are very concerned about that. And and in fact, it's one of the major concerns we have with the internal market, apart from the cost. Uh, and of course, Monitor has this conflicting uh, yeah. imperative to actually encourage competition. Mm -hmm. And I would echo John's point. As a commissioner, there is no point in me, what I would call almost asset stripping, the profitable parts of a service away from my main provider of, of acute and emergency care if all I'm going to do is destabilise one of the prime functions that I have to commission services for. But isn't one of the problems that most doctors have been working in the public sector now for many, many years, maybe they're just concerned about the private sector because it's not something that they're used to and it will be okay? Oh, no, I think they are used to. I mean, we've, we've had things like ISTCs and various other things. Now, you know, whether or not you take an ideological view, I don't. I look at the evidence. And there is plenty of evidence that they have not been really good value for money. They've been given contracts irrespective of the level of work that they do. They've put restrictions on the sort of patients that they will take on. Those are complex ones or who need uh, high intensity care. They're not taking. And, and you leave the NHS. But it's more, more worrying that it creates fragmentation. It, it doesn't give you this sort of Joined seamless up care. And, you ask patients what they want, they want as good quality care as close to home as is possible. Okay. 